This is Jonathan Ferguson, the keeper of firearms and artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And on this episode, he's going to be checking out the zombie dispatching weapons of Back for Blood. At one nice touch I, I noticed as the model was spinning, you see down the barrel and you can actually see the plastic crimped ends of the shotgun cartridges. I do like it when things are fully modelled. If there are any other games, guns and mechanics that you guys want to see Jonathan break down, let us know in the comment section below. Be sure to subscribe for more videos like this one, and if you'd like to help out the Royal Armies Museum and continue to support Jonathan's work, check out the links in the description of this video. Right, over to Jonathan. Okay, M1A. This is not a legally different designation, and it looks really good. As with most of the guns in the game, they've done a, a good job of modeling a lot of the detail on this. Our example here has the older style wooden stock uh, with a sheet metal upper handguard. Polymer stocks like this are quite common now. Wood, um, although it can look nice, is a pain to look after. Uh, it absorbs moisture, it has to be regularly oiled or lacquered or painted with something. But nice bits of walnut like this do require a bit of care, and they're actually more expensive to get these things carved, finished, maintained. In the 70s-ish, most military firearms switched over to polymer, like we see here, but this is the civilian version of the rifle. Now, it actually has the ghost of where the selector switch would have been fitted, had this ever been finished as an M14. Now, a weird quirk of history is that although M14s were made full auto capable, very few were ever issued with that switch. The vast majority had the switch physically removed so that the rifleman could not use this on automatic mode. It was recognised that it was a very little value. Yes, you could hit fire in a trench in an emergency, but you only have a 20 round magazine. The thing jumps around like crazy. Your sight picture just goes if you are trying to aim from the shoulder. It just wasn't worth it. And so they stuck with what was essentially a box magazine fed M1 Garand. Yes, it's got a different gas system on here. Big old birdcage flash hider, which is still here on the M1A. But it is essentially, the, the, the M1 Garand lineage is very clear to see. The reload on this is actually, I find a little awkward, but I'm not a proficient user of the weapon. So you do have to be very positive getting that in there and then getting it out. It's not difficult by any means, but it's not that modern um, slam it in and forget about it that we're so used to seeing. <laughs> Interesting footnote, and a fair bit of detail actually, is that the accessories that you fit to your, your guns in this game come in little mock-up boxes, which is quite nice, showing what they are, with some information, looks like something you might find on the shelf in a gun store. And then the corporate logo on there is Slamfire, which is not a real company, but it is an allusion to a real thing in the firearms world, which is occasionally deliberate. So with some shot, pump action shotguns allow you to hold the trigger down and slam fire. So as the pump grip goes forward, it chambers and fires the round, which in theory, with a fair bit of practice, means you can whack out all, all, all of your shots a lot quicker. In practice, very rarely used. And the other meaning of it is not so good. And that, that is when you release the bolt on a firearm, either manually or with a hold open device, or even actually if it's running itself, it's most worrying. So the gun is cycling, say, and as the bolt hits home, it fires itself without you pulling the trigger. It's called a slam fire. Literally, the bolt slams and fires, and then usually that will cause it to come back again. And in some situations, that can create a runaway gun where it just shoots itself until it's empty. Obviously, none of that is good. So it's a slightly ironic name, I think, for a firearms accessories company, because it kind of implies that their stuff makes your gun malfunction. <laughs> It's probably worth noting that although that bit of accessory rail for an optical sight up here on the handguard is, I'm sure they exist, it's not the best place to be mounting a mount for an optical sight. This isn't really moving much, but I can feel it moving slightly. You would probably lose zero after a while, especially with the recoil of this thing. This is why, or partly why, the M14 EBR and the other enhanced M14s were stripped from their stocks and a whole new chassis built for them to incorporate a mount for an optical sight. Trying to retrospectively upgrade things is often great, but comes with its challenges, and that would be one of them. On me. Okay, good old zombie apocalypse staple, the pump action shotgun, the Remington 870, which we've seen so many times now. Looks like a pretty good rendition of that. Fairly detailed, despite the slightly cartoony vibe of this 
game and of Left 4 Dead. The configuration here is, well, it's Magpul furniture, so it gives it a almost a sci-fi edge, really, with the angular buttstock polymer foregrip with the, with the stop ribs on it. The heat shield on top of the barrel is not Magpul and is not standard either. I believe that's a, an aftermarket thing, it would be if it was a real gun. And that is really just to help protect your, your hand, should your fingers or contact the barrel, which in this scenario would make a tremendous amount of sense because the sheer number of rounds you're putting through this thing, the sheer amount of heat, means that you actually would physically burn yourself if you touched the barrel. So it doesn't make sense to have it on there, even as much as a game like this makes any sense. The reload is a little funky, kind of lobbing sh sh cartridges into the magazine with the thumb and in reality if you've ever loaded a, a pump action shotgun you know that it requires a very positive firm push to seat that thing so that the little claw retains the round it doesn't just immediately bounce straight out but then that's everything in this game is amped up and super quick kind of charlie chaplin levels of super speed in terms of all of the handling all of the reload because otherwise you just wouldn't be able to keep up with the action Another action movie favourite is the Atchison AA-12 automatic shotgun. I believe derived from the Deu USAS-12. That runs rather faster than this does, so that's perhaps 600-ish rounds per minute. This thing is uh, about half that, so I think the, the rate that's depicted here is accurate. I assume the idea there was to try and tame the thing, because automatic fire from a shotgun is of questionable utility at the best of times and pretty uncontrollable with a load like buckshot or slug which you're probably gonna have to use to even get the thing to cycle so <laughs> fairly exotic the chances of you coming across this in this kind of scenario are pretty slim and it wouldn't certainly wouldn't be my first choice the reliability in this situation would be pretty questionable finding ammunition wouldn't necessarily be too hard although it'd have to be the right shell length the right load to actually cycle the thing so that's that's a consideration and it's just it's too too finicky and there's no point in, in full auto. I mean, yeah, in a scenario where you have hordes of these things coming at you, it would be useful for a, for a brief period of time. But then the reload is gonna be a, a faff as well. The, the drum, I mean, the drum is a weak point in terms of reliability anyway. They're all quite fiddly to get on. It's got a bit of a Thompson submachine gun loading situation going on with a, with a guide rib that you have to align. And if you're stressed and panicking and tired, not great. So if you were stuck with this, I'd say you'd probably be better off using it on semi-automatic. And I always think a measure of whether a game is vaguely realistic or not is if you do better with things on semi-automatic. Very few um, games achieve that, and why should they? It's not usually the point. But I, I totally get the, uh, the zombie apocalypse appeal of the AA-12. We need to get out of here. Also expected, of course, the AK-47. I won't get into the tired argument as to whether AK-47 is a legitimate designation or not. I'll leave that to the comment section. Most of us could agree that this is not an AK-47 because it is in fact an AKM. You can see the configuration of the stamped receiver. We can see the, the characteristic dimple over the magazine. All looks good. So although we don't have a modern sighting system built into this version, we do have the classic Soviet era sight rail from the old um, AKMN, which I guess we could call this now. And attached to that is an over the top of the top cover Picatinny rail mount, and then you put your optics on there. So nice to see that the AK is not being artificially kept down in terms of its capabilities. You absolutely would be able to make single, somewhat accurate shots like that at that distance. Often the AK in video games is sort of nerfed to being a glorified submachine gun. But that's not the case here. This, this thing can hold its own as a rifle in game. The reload is fine, but not recommended to pull down on the magazine to, to remove it. That locking lug is at the front and you always want to push away to ensure that the thing clears the magazine well and comes off. If you try and push pull like that, you're quite likely to fumble it and get the magazine stuck if only momentarily, which would be very bad. Not wrong per se, but not advisable um, for those of you wishing to enter the zombie apocalypse for real. Um, don't do that. So a bit of an odd pose there, um, or position and hold as they say in the British Army, which I wasn't in by the way. Um, we've got a, a slightly gangster tilt to the weapon. 
and I'm not entirely sure why. If you're in very tight quarters, you might have to tilt the weapon to fit in whatever space you're in. I can't imagine a situation where that would be very helpful other than shooting around the left side of a barrier or a wall or something of that nature, which we're not doing. So it seems to be a, a stylistic choice, I suppose. I don't really get it. You would always want to keep it in the shoulder, looking through the sights as normal, whether you are standing, crouching, or prone. It's disgusting! What's your aim? Oh, sorry! My bad. Got We've got a Barrett. Don't remember having anything of that power level in the old Left 4 Dead games. It seems to work well here, essentially the heavy artillery. Running around with this thing, shoulder firing it. A bit less plausible than it would be if it was an M82 or M107. With this, you've got a built-in, slower rate of fire. Having said that, the way the bolt handle is manipulated, I, mean, I won't embarrass myself by demonstrating it, but unless you are said unit, you probably aren't going to be flicking it back and forth like a target rifle bolt. This is substantial, powerful springs in there. You've got to get that forward and down. We don't really get the sense of the meatiness of this design from the animations. As to the optics, there's no reason why you would have to have a magnifying optical sight on this thing. That's its real world purpose, of course, for reasonably long range shooting, explosive ordnance disposal, anti-materiel, aircraft vehicles, structures, radar dishes, and sometimes for shooting enemy personnel as well. Usually that requires a fair bit of magnification from a scope, but in this fictional scenario, where you're using it for essentially as a giant glorified shotgun, red dot is fine. Even the iron sights, probably fine. You would be very tired very quickly, even if you were quite sizable, I think. So with certain weapon configurations, this crouch down, tilt the weapon thing does make sense. So something like this Barrett equipped with its conventional long range magnified optic, you only have two options using that at close range. It's, it's basically, it's like try walking around your, your house with a pair of binoculars or something. It's, it's not sensible to be looking through a magnified lens uh, and trying to get around at close quarters. So you have two options, either look over the scope, which could be quite awkward with this thing, or cant it over. I think in this case, tilting it makes a certain amount of sense. Why you'd only do that when crouched, though, uh, doesn't quite make sense. I'll take this. Okay, pause at 7.14. What the hell is happening there? Looks like whenever you eject a mag, the slide magically goes to the rear. Am I seeing that right? Right, I don't know if it's a Resident Evil connection, but I think you know, having a Beretta in a zombie game does tick a few boxes. Now this says Beretta M9, it's not an M9, because it has the accessory rail under, or on the dust cover, under the barrel. But it's not an M9A1, because it has the wrong shape of trigger guard. Because when they added that rail, they reprofiled the trigger guard, which used to curve inwards, like this one, to be a flat surface to mate with the back of the light or laser module that you're fitting. So this is a curious hybrid of M9 and M9A1. Right, a curious oversight here with the Beretta. Whenever we hit reload, we wick flick out the magazine and magically the slide leaps to the rear and locks open, regardless of the state of the weapon. So I'm hoping that gets fixed at some point because that will be distracting to nerds of a certain stripe like me. So it's even more of a 93R in 92 clothing than I thought because it's actually three round burst only which is exactly what the 93R does it doesn't actually allow for auto fire and neither does this now if you're trying to kind of gunsmith this thing to fire more than one round quickly that's achievable for fully automatic I don't think it would be achievable certainly not very easily and not without leaving some visible evidence on this on this gun to turn it into a three round burst mechanism that requires widgets and doickies inside the gun that don't exist inside this gun. Without getting into the details of how you would make it fully automatic, of course, it is substantially more straightforward to look at doing that. I wouldn't raise too much of an eyebrow if this thing was full auto. I'm raising both eyebrows at once that it is three round burst. Reloading. Incoming. Right, so our third shotgun now. The Benelli M4 Super 90, semi-automatic shotgun used for military, law enforcement, competition purposes. This one's relatively vanilla for, for a modern um, tactical shotgun. I mean, if you had to take a shotgun into this level of frenetic combat of any kind, it's an excellent choice. What doesn't make a huge amount of sense, and I suspect this has been done deliberately to elicit a comment, <laughs> is a magnified optic on a shotgun. 
Not entirely out of the question. If you were trying to deliver slugs at 50 meters or more, maybe, you might want a, a magnified optic to do that. But it would hamper your ability to use it as a close quarters weapon. Uh, something else we can see through this scope is the always-on tracers, as I think I'm going to start calling them now, which are not, uh, not just a video game thing, a movie thing. Every gun that fires a shot has a tracer effect coming out of it, whether or not it's loaded with tracers. And we see that weirdly up close through the scope, so we see several tracer patterns of pieces of shot as they emerge magnified out of the end of the, the gun. Suffice to say, you wouldn't see that. In reality, uh, you'd probably see a little a wisp of smoke and maybe an effect on target, and that would be it. So we have another M4 that isn't an M4 here. Now, it's very close. However, because of the very high resolution here, we can see that is not an issue lower receiver. That is, um, if this was real, uh, either a dealer sample or illicitly <laughs> produced select fire AR-15 lower receiver. And it has some sort of skull and crossbones maker's mark on there. Someone who's played the game can tell us what it actually says, but it's not US government issue. This is a civilian configuration of AR-15, but it is select fire. It is fully automatic, it is semi-automatic, and obviously has the safe position as well. The reload is interesting, it's very slick. We've got, uh, drop the magazine, magazine goes on, and then the thumb is held in a position where we can immediately hit the bolt release. That's doable, but you'd have to have some skill to be able to pull that off every time. I mean, the classic example of, a, of an AR-15 reload, which is actually taught in, uh, or has been taught anyway, in military circles and law, en law enforcement circles, is Val Kilmer's reload in heat in the big street battle, where it's quite slow and deliberate, but sufficiently flawless that it's been used as teaching material. And you can see there how the magazine goes on. He's probably tugging slightly to make sure it's fitted, and then he's separately hitting the bolt release. Here, it's all done in a fluid motion. Moving toward the station. We'll keep an eye on them and update you on the situation as it develops. Oh! So this is a bit of a greatest hits of zombie slash action movie guns. Of course we've got a Deagle. Of course we have. Now our, our 50 here is, um, it is a Mark 19, but it's not the latest version that we see in Back for Blood, which has, um, I believe it's got the shorter barrel assembly and it's got uh, built-in compensator ports up here on the barrel. And as far as mounting magnifying optical sights on a pistol, which isn't usually very helpful unless you are target shooting or maybe hunting large creatures, this is one of the better sort of ways to mount a sight because the slide's not banging back and forth and messing up your accuracy, not degrading the actual sight. In terms of actual utility of this thing, I'm not sure it's, I mean, it's not, it's not the bomb-proof reliability of something like a Glock. Low capacity, seven rounds of, of 50 Action Express. It's maybe not an ideal choice, and yes, it's powerful, but it's not rifle level of power or, or even shotgun level of power. Would you bother? Um, I mean, you might find it. It's much more of a recreational firearm than it is a practical one. I have fond memories of the um, M16 from Left 4 Dead and Left 4 Dead 2. I've um, got another one here, and it has been updated. It is either an M16A3 or A4. And the one I've grabbed just makes life uh, more confusing because <laughs> this isn't even an M16A2. A, and this will break some, some hearts for, for um, AR-15 enthusiasts, but this is an old Model 01 lower receiver with various bits of M16A2 furniture and an M16A2 upper receiver that has then had its carrying handle cut off and a uh, n original NATO spec rail fitted to it. And this, as you haven't already guessed, this is British experimentation in the 1980s to see how the very well proven, world standard M16 would fare when fitted with a four power British optical sight. So you don't often see an M16 with a SUSAT on it, so I thought I'd show it to you. So we have all the A2 features here that I would expect, except for the barrel is the wrong profile. You can see here, this is the standard A2 heavy profile barrel. The flash hider is weirdly stretched and the handguard is weirdly fat. You can probably see from, from this one. Everything looks a bit beefy, but otherwise it's kind of what we'd expect to see. Bit of a detail on the M16. When we're looking through the scope here, we're looking, we're looking along the top of this classic 
ribbed handguard, and what we're not seeing are these many holes for cooling. It just looks to be, it's the right sort of texture-ish, but that should be drilled at the factory with all of these holes, and they're not there. So that handguard is a bit of an anomaly, but what I, what I noticed more than anything else about this, and frankly, everything else I've seen so far, is the sheer amount of gore all over your hands, all over the guns. So I think we, we do need to talk about that briefly. Brains are not a test medium for military rifles. Mud, sand, water, ice, but not blood, brains, <laughs> uh, the sort of stuff that's flying absolutely everywhere. If you did slather your firearm in something of that texture, shall we say, what would happen? Well, I don't think it would be good, and I especially don't think the um, holding the thing on, on the wonk like this that we're seeing done in this game that would not end well because the stuff that's coming over the gun and landing in this ejection port, that's the last place you want anything to be landing. And as you're firing it, stuff is going to be landing in there. Uh, never mind the fact that you might then get stuff on the magazine and introduce it into the magazine well, that could end badly too. Getting it on your optics could render them unusable and you'd have to tilt it on the side and maybe that's the point. Uh, so suffice to say, zombie goo and firearms would not Mix. I could use that. Watch chicken. This is a very faithful, as far as I can see, impression of the US M249 squad automatic weapon variant of the FN Minimi 5.56mm light machine gun. Uh, you can always spot the 249 because of the upper handguard, which isn't usually present on other. Uh, Minimi variants. It seems to work as it ought to, except that when we have the thing tilted on the side, there's some some pretty worryingly lethargic case ejection going on there. I don't know if it was a, a glitch, but uh, I've noticed that when the player stops shooting, the very pretty column of spent cases coming vertically up out of the gun seems to just vanish into thin air. Whatever was still in the air just vanishes. Um, I don't know if that's something that might get fixed. What, of course, I don't think the game lets you do, that you'll be familiar with from things like Battlefield, is actually provide any sort of meaningful support fire. The zombies aren't going to react to uh, being suppressed anyway, but you could um, pick them off with you know, sh short controlled bursts and perhaps offer more effective cover than running around with the team blazing away from the hit. But I realise that doesn't support the gameplay of this particular game very well and actually practically speaking you probably just get left behind and eaten <laughs> um, or clawed to death or whatever while you're lying down trying to lay down fire. <laughs> Alright, sawn off shotgun. Another one from the tick list of weapons we would expect to see in a zombie game. Now this one I've picked here, this is quite a vintage piece, 1880s. Would have been actually quite a nice, attractive sporting shotgun at one time, but it's had a, a bit of a hard life and has then had the barrels cut down for some sort of criminal purpose. This came to us from one of the UK police forces, having been seized in a criminal context, but it does have what are uh, called uh, Damas Damascus barrels, where the, the steel wire, iron wire is twisted to create the barrels, which would have looked really nice originally. The gun we see in the game is well, it's straight out Doom 2, isn't it? It's, it doesn't have the, the buttstock still in place, which really you would want for, for any kind of serious use. It's a classic sawn off shotgun, sawn off barrels and sawn off stock, and it has the much more common top lever. It does still have external hammers like this one though and they're both um, 12 bore or 12 gauge. Uh, one nice touch I, I noticed as the model was spinning, uh, you see down the barrel and you can actually see the plastic crimped ends of the shotgun cartridges. I, I do like it when things are fully modeled, all the working parts in there doing their thing, ideally. I realize it's not always necessary or you know, there isn't time for it, but it's nice when things are modeled as though they're real. Two triggers on this, as indeed on um, most double barrel shotguns, not all. Even when they only have one trigger though, it only fires one barrel first, than the next. These are sporting purpose firearms and the idea is to have two shots to shoot birds, clays, whatever it is. So these modified movie guns most likely and certainly video game guns that go off, that set off both barrels with one pull of the trigger, you'd have to modify the thing fairly significantly to get it to do that. As to why that one's called the Belgian, well this one's a, a, a British maker but um, Belgium was a real gun making hub for, for all sorts of different guns of all sorts of different qualities from very early in history all the way up until, well, now. And in the 19th century, uh, early 20th century, there were lots of 
cheap Belgian shotguns being made. So that may be why it's called the Belgian. Well, right, well, this is a bit of a, a gangster special Intratech Tech 9, or in this case, the Interdynamic KG9, because this thing kept getting reinvented. Um, designed originally as a machine pistol in Europe, ended up as a semi-automatic pistol, although it looks like a machine pistol, for the US self-defense market, essentially. Fell into the wrong hands frequently. It's a, it's a classic gang weapon. It's not amazing, but it would be around. You know, in an urban environment in the US, uh, if you were to happen across firearms, perhaps converted to full auto, I'm sure some of them would be Tech 9s. Whether they would run reliably is another matter. Whether you could hit anything without a shoulder stock, is another matter. Uh, we do have sling loops on this one, so you could uh, put it on a sling, push it out for some measure of control. Uh, it's not likely to be super accurate and not necessarily super reliable either, but it does it does fit the world, I think. In case anyone's thinking that um, this thing firing with the bolt forward or closed bolt operation is wrong, um, well, it depends on the variant. I mean, this one is actually open bolt, so it would fire and then blow back. Most of the, well, the Tech 9, there's a variant, was designed to be semi-automatic only and therefore they redesigned the bolt to be closed when fired. So they changed the whole design inside in a way, in a bid to make it legally not readily convertible, if that makes sense. The worry from the authorities was it, was it would be easily converted to fully automatic, making it more of a, in theory, useful criminal weapon. Usually when I point that nerdy fact out, it's because someone's modeled the gun incorrectly. In this case, no, it should be bolt forward. And even if you converted it to full auto, it would still fire from the closed bolt, like that. Ugh, careless. Those were the guns of Back for Blood, which I will definitely be trying out at some point as a veteran Left for Dead fan. Thank you very much for watching, as always. We've got the links in the description for donations or anything you might want to check out from us over at the Royal Armouries Museum. Do come and visit us if you can. Uh, check out our social media. Uh, check out our YouTube channel. You might find something of interest there. Um, otherwise, see you again next time.